so today we're going to take a look at uh, reciprocal transformations, the uh, last lesson in our unit. Um, they're kind of better to think of as their own transformations, so I'm going to give you some strategies for dealing with reciprocals. Now the first two things in the strategies is a little bit of terminology. So uh, one of them you're probably familiar with, and that's the vertical asymptote. So um, anybody seen a vertical asymptote before or have heard that term? Okay, good. Um, how would you describe it to somebody? Sure, Lily, go for it. If you have this line, you draw your graph, and um, your graph point goes past that line, it has to like Yeah, that's pretty good. It's kind of like a barrier. It's going to be a vertical line, and the graph can't touch that line. So um, usually when we're doing work here and we see a vertical asymptote, usually it's because um, something has gone wrong. Uh, it's usually a division by zero, so we'll uh, we'll see why. That's why it can't touch on the asymptote because then it would divide. The graph would have to divide by zero, and and then we see that all we do. And then the cal your calculator would explode. Okay. Um, so an invariant point is another term for uh, transformations. Basically, this is a uh, point that remains unchanged after a transformation. So it's not just for reciprocals. It's uh, a term you, you need to know. Um, you know, it, it could be that there is a question on your provincial that might say, um, which point on this graph is an invariant point? Here's the, you know, original graph. Here's the transformation. Invariant point is one that does not move under transformation. Okay. So these are the first two things we're going to look for when we do a reciprocal transformation. So the first one, uh, the graph should be pretty simple. Why don't we put it on the uh, sheet right now? So we're at negative two. So that's the original line we have. Now our goal when we look at these graphs is to be able to find those two things. So the two things we just mentioned were vertical asymptotes and invariant points. Okay, so I'll bring up some software so we can take a look. The uh, y equals x minus 2. So that's the same line that you should be looking at now. Okay, it's reciprocal, the 1 over x minus 2 graph. Would look like this. Okay. Can anybody tell me where they think a vertical asymptote would go on that graph? Two. At two. Yes, you're correct, Anthony. So if we were to, to jot down the vertical asymptote, let's do that. There's going to be a vertical asymptote here. Now, how did you know that so fast, Anthony? How did well, you know there was? Well, well, if x were to equal two, then we'd have two minus zero, two minus two. Two. One divided by two minus two. Right. In other words, one divided by zero. Good. So you that's what that, you get that you generate a black hole and everyone dies. Okay. A little less dramatic for math, but maybe in physics class that could happen. Um, so for this one, if we're divided by zero, that's why we want to avoid that area. So we have a vertical asymptote on two. So that's correct. Um, can you see where there's an invariant point? There's actually uh, more than one. Yes, yeah, yeah, where the two graphs intersect. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's right, Anthony. Um, so right here, where uh, my finger is at, uh, let's see here, 3, 1. So sort of this area of the graph. And there's another one right here where um, the two graphs meet. So this point, neither of those points have moved under transformation. So let's plot them into the, uh, the graph here. Uh, there's one right there. And there's one right there. So what do you think, why do you think it is that, that those points haven't moved? I'll put the other... Uh, because they're stubborn and ornery and... No, there's actually a good reason why they haven't moved. They're lazy? Well, what an invariant point again, I'll say it one more time, is a point that does not change under transformation. Okay, what kind of numbers don't change if you do a reciprocal? One. One is a good example. There's another example. Negative one is the other example. So if you take the reciprocal of one or the reciprocal of negative one, you have not changed the number. That's why those points are still in the same place. They're unchanged. Okay. So for now, I'm just going to sketch in the rest of that graph that was there. And it goes like this. But we'll do the other, uh, the other two steps 
in a minute. So I want you to try. Hopefully you can do it much quicker. Um, here's the graph this time. See if you can locate those first two steps. Where are the asymptotes going to be? Where's the uh, invariant points going to be? If you have got your graphing calculator today, that might be helpful to you as well. Um, I'll put it up on the graphing software in just a second. So, uh, so that you can see it better, there's, there's the version from the graphing calculator. So see if you can work from this graph to find the first two steps. Okay, let's take a look. Okay, so um, here's your points. Okay, so let's see. Can anybody find asymptotes? Does anybody think they know where those asymptotes are going to be? Just show me by a show of hands so I can see if we're catching on. Okay, Kara, do you want to take a shot at it? Yeah, that's exactly right. So here's where we're going to find the asymptotes. If the graph equals 0, then there's going to be a problem when we take the reciprocal. It's going to be 1 over 0. We're going to try and divide by 0. So and we'll blow up the universe. And bad things will happen. So here's uh, the two asymptotes. Now let's think about how can we find the invariant points. Does anybody think they know where the invariant points are? Okay, Anthony, why don't you take a shot at it? Well, what, well one of them, that I, the, what, the one I found was at the very bottom of the parabola, 0, uh, negative 9. This one actually does move under transformation, because if I take the reciprocal of 9, then where am I going to end up? I'm going to end up at 1 over 9 here. So one thing, this step is pretty simple, but I guess it takes a little practice. But one thing you want to do is think about this line here. This is the line y equals 1, because it won't change there. And you want to think about the line here at y equals negative 1, because those will show you, well, maybe I should do a better job of that line. Those will show you just about where your invariant points are. So on my graph, I can see that right here, right here, right here, and right here, those have the value 1 or negative 1, so they will not change under the reciprocal. So I'll do my best to put them onto the new graph here. So for example, if that's the asymptote, it's going to be about there. Uh, whoops, sorry, wrong side. It's going to be about uh, there and there. Well, would you like me to switch to black? Okay, and then again on the other side, about like that. Okay. So to show you just the rest of this graph, um, I'll show you what the rest of it looks like. But for now, hopefully, the two first steps are, are ones that are getting familiar to you. So right now, this is what the graph would look like. So if you didn't bring your graphing calculator, I am the human graphing calculator. There we go. Okay, so we're going to take a look. Uh, yes, now we're recording again. So let's just put our thoughts down to paper. So the vertical asymptotes occur when the graph equals... Where do we find them? Yeah, when the graph equals to zero. So... That's what we're looking for, is we want to find them when the graph equals zero. This is also known as what? Where would you look at a graph to find zero quick? Well, the origins of one, one possible place, but there's like a whole line. Yeah, the x-axis. So this is by finding the x-intercepts. So any, any graph that was, see any x-intercept 
Here's one here. Here's the asymptote here. Here's the two here and here. Here's the asymptotes to match. Okay, so the x-intercepts are going to turn into asymptotes. So that's one way we can find it quickly. Um, invariant points, they occur when the graph is equal to plus or minus 1. Like we mentioned, if you take the reciprocal of plus or minus 1, nothing changes there. So before we talk about the third step, we should definitely be able to put uh, these, this English into math. So if the point x, y is on the graph, y equals f of x, then where we would expect to find the transformed point is simply going to be just take the reciprocal of it. That's what we're doing here, is we're flipping the y-coordinate by taking its reciprocal.